Hi, welcome to my channel, Web Development Made Easy. In today's uh, session, we'll talk about JWT, Session ID versus the OAuth versus MTLS. Uh, there are multiple ways of doing uh, the authentication or authorization things. So we have these many uh, different kinds of uh, terminology in today's uh, world. But um, we here I'm just going to differentiate and see the first uh, why are we using the each one and the purpose of the same so the topics mainly is like uh, what is jwt json web tokens session id versus jwt and what is a jwt format after that we will discuss on what is oauth open authorization uh, oauth 2.0 versus oauth 1.0 and then last we will talk about what is uh, mtls mutual transport layer security Okay, so here what is JWT? JSON Web Token. So it's an, a, a kind of access token. It's used for authorization. Uh, just to be clear, it is for authorization, not for authentication. So even before we go about uh, how we use JWT, we'll talk about how was the authorization done before JWT. So before JWT is in picture, how was this done? It's by using session id so by using session id this will be be generated the session id will be generated by the server and stored in server memory after successful login authentication I'll, and will be sent to the browser to use it for subsequent request how the server validates the user after the first successful authentication so it stores session id in the browser cookies at the time of authentication and gets the same session id for other request as long as the session is valid. So let's see this uh, the uh, picture where the client as a browser and server is the where we have the request coming uh, coming to. When the request coming from the client browser, so initially it asks for the client uh, or the customer or uh, username login or the password. Once it is validated and successful, so server uh, creates a session ID and stores in session memory and sends back the same session ID back to the browser. So in the browser, it stores it in the browser cookies and it will send the same session ID back to the server uh, for any uh, uh, data that is required for, for all the requests. Okay, as long as session ID is valid, it will get back the uh, response from the server. This is how it was done before the uh, JWT token. Now, let's discuss about the differences, right? Why do the need for JWT? The session ID is stored in server memory and it is particularly to one server or one app because it's stored in this one server so it can be used only for that server. We cannot use the same session ID to make a request to another app. Um, but by using the JWT, it's uh, also called, uh, called as access token. We can make calls to other apps assuming that uh, they allow access by validating the JWT. The JWT access token is not stored in the server. Instead, it's encrypted with a key and sends it back to the client. When the client sends it back, the server decrypts it and verifies to make sure that this is the token which is sent uh, to the client. That means, right, so we are not storing this uh, JWT in the server. It is sent back to the client and the client can use for all the other servers as well, as long as they use the same uh, token uh, decryption to validate it. So here is the difference between the two calls. So this is what we discussed in the slide one, how the session ID validates. Here we see we uh, the, how the JWT is used. When the request came in and username, login and password validates, the server creates the JWT token and sends it back to the browser. And this browser now sends the, the JWT in the header param and sends it to the server. And server decrypts it and verifies that is it the same one that has been sent to the client. So this JWT can be sent to the other server as well as long as it uses the same uh, encryption decryption uh, way to validate the JWT. So if it is correct, then uh, it responds back. Now let's see how the JWT, right? What is the JWT and what is the format? 
the JWT uh, JSON web tokens consists of three parts separated by dots, which are header, payload, and signature. You see when it is encoded how it looks, right? The first one is the header, and second one is the payload, and third one is the signature. When we decode it, uh, and you can see what it contains in the header and what it contains in the payload, say like for example, right, user and the party ID or admin or true or not. And this is the last part, which is the signature, uh, which tells that this is uh, this is used to verify that this is the same token that has been sent to the client and the same token that came back for the future request. Okay. So the server creates a JWT and sends it to the client for future service calls. The key is not stored in the server like session ID. So the JWT itself has the required signature in encrypted format. The server decrypts it to verify the client before sending the response. Here if you see right, this is the browser and this is the server. When the first request comes in, the username, login and password, right? It validates it. If the uh, validation is successful, that means authentication is successful, then it creates a JWT with the secret and sends it back to the browser with the JWT. So for future request, uh, the, sense, the browser sends the JWT in the authorization header and asks for the uh, re response. And server validates the JWT to make sure that uh, this is the correct JWT that has been sent. And then if it is correct, then sends the response back. Here you see this, right? So this, uh, because the JWT is not stored in the server, this JWT can be sent to the multiple apps in the same organization, assuming that they all use the same encryption and decryption format, all three, uh, say bank, retirement, and say loan applications. As long as they use the same encryption and decryption uh, format, the browser can connect to different apps. Uh, by using the JWT. That is the reason um, the JWT they are using. Now, let's go to the third uh, terminology, OAuth. What is OAuth? OAuth is open authorization. OAuth is used for authorization, not for authentication. OAuth is a open authorization framework. It is a delegated authorization framework. Allows an application to access specific resources on behalf of a user authorization between the uh, services as well so we can use auth the authorization between services using the access token provided after authentication access token contains user allowed permissions uh, here the access token format can be jwt the so jwt typically consists of we discussed already header payload or body and the signatures separated by dot uh, we'll discuss more on OAuth uh, versus the JWT in the next slide. Uh, before we go there, let's see difference between OAuth 1.0 versus OAuth 2.0. OAuth 1.0 required crypto implementation and crypto interoperability. It was a challenge for many developers to implement. OAuth 1.0 only handles web workflows, but OAuth 2.0 considers non-web clients as well. OAuth 2.0 came in uh, around 10, 2012 by simplifying the developer's implementation. As of today, uh, most companies are using OAuth 2.0. Uh, I hope uh, I clarified you the difference between OAuth 1.1 and OAuth 2.0. From next slide onwards, when we say OAuth, we are talking about OAuth 2.0. Okay, so what is OAuth 2.0, right? Open authorization is an open standard for token-based authentication over public networks. OAuth allows third-party services such as Facebook and Google to use end-user account information without exposing the user's account credentials to a third party uh, by using the token, whatever the token that gets created. It acts as an intermediary on behalf of end users, providing access tokens to third party services authorized to share certain account information. The process of obtaining a token is called authorization flow. Uh, for example, we just see this one, the user, uh, your app and the Google server. When you go to the app, it requests for a token. Okay, say assume that you, uh, I have one more slide uh, where you can talk more about the, exactly this app with uh, say, printing app but here this just i give so when you go to the printing app and ask for 
okay let's go to google server and get me the my photos right so your app will go to the google server and it server request for a token and the it will go to the user and ask for the user login consent once its login is success server sends the authorization code so when you send the ax authorization code it sends back the token response by using this token we can go to the google api and get uh, say google photos if it is in the photos or google drive and things like that okay now let me go to the next one right uh, that is what we discussed about jwt versus oauth jwt is suitable for stateless applications as it allows the application authenticate users and authorize access to resources without maintaining a session state on the server uh, we discussed in the second slide where we clearly said that JWT is not stored in the server. It will send back to the browser and browser will have this uh, uh, client will have the JWT. On the other hand, OAuth on the other hand maintains session state on the server and uses a unique token to grant access to the user's uh, resources. Okay. So now let's see the overview, right? Uh, use cases. JWT is better suited for APIs. OAuth is useful for web, API, and browser applications and resources. Tokens. JWT defines the token format. OAuth defines the authorization protocol. In the usability, JWT is easier to learn and use from the initial stages. OAuth is more complex. Storage. JWT can only use client-side storage. OAuth can use both server side and client side storage. So in the OAuth, it can have the token and it can um, have the token expiry as well. Scope JWT handles fewer use cases and has smaller scope. OAuth is more flexible and used easily used for various use cases. Now let's see one of the use case, right? Uh, using uh, JWT with OAuth. Although JWT and OAuth serve different purposes they are compatible and can be used together because the oauth2 protocol does not specify a token format uh, jwt can be incorporated into oauth2 usage okay so let's take this quick flow of oauth2 using jwt token right say the user went to the photo print app and saying that okay i want to take a photo print but he does not have photos in the photo print right his photos are there say is in the google photos so when he user goes photo print and say okay go to the google photos and get the photos and the step two is yeah <clears throat> and um, what google does is oh okay photo print app is asking for the photos but i need to ask the user whether he is the one who is trying to authorize it so it goes to the user and asks validate the user so if photo print app is asking for the uh, for your photos are you fine so provide username password and let me know what information we can provide it back. So user authenticates it saying that, okay, these are the things which photo print app can be done. And the step four, so once the authentication is success, Google creates a token and sends it back to the photo print as an access token. Once photo print app receives the token, uh, it sends back to the Google photo saying that, okay, this is my token, which is uh, received. Um, by using the access token and request it. So the server validates the token. If it is valid, it returns back the photos. So this is how the overall uh, OAuth flow at the simple. Uh, this is one of the sim uh, simplest example how it works. Okay, now the next one is MTLS, which is a mutual transport layer security. Uh, when we are using this uh, MTLS as for uh, authentication between say, two different uh, organizations right let's take one of the organizations bank and other one is also a bank and they want to share some information saying that uh, say one bank has uh, uh, customer details and other bank has the uh, loan details of the same customer but they want to uh, share those data for some reason so that is the time like where they will use mutual transport layer security saying that those two servers uh, will need to have the certificates installed on both the servers this is one of the way to communicate and more secure so it has more terminology to know even before we start uh, communicating so the one of the terminals say client and server can communicate securely with each other over transport layer security it's tls they have something like public key it is used to encrypt the data slash key 
and it also has private key it is used to decrypt the data um, encrypted by the public key and private key will be stored with the same uh, organization where it is uh, created it will not be shared with anyone else but the public key can be shared to the outside of the organization as well encryption protocol based on a public and private key encrypt using a public key only matching private key can decrypt whatever it has been encrypted by the public key what is tls certificate data file contains a public key issuer expiration date it's a tls certificate as this data certificate authority <coughs> authority ca creates trusted tls certificate self signed uh, there are self signed tls certificates can be used but they are marked as untrusted tls handshake process of verifying tls certificate and matching private key so there are two uh, types of um, mtls one is one way tls and there is a two way tls okay so the two way tls is more secure than one way tls okay now let's see what is one way tls right in the one way tls the server has a tls ca certificate and public private key pair but not the client client does not have any key in uh, one way tls but the server has a tls ca certificate public key as well as private key when the client uh, sends a uh, connect to a server server responds and presents tls certificate and the public key once the client receives the tls certificate so it goes to the certificate authority and ask to verify this is the same server what i am looking for and can you confirm that this is a valid certificate and uh, certificate authority confirms that yes it's a valid certificate or the valid server once it uh, gets the valid as true then the exchange data over tls connection server has the private key to decrypt any data that sends by the client with public key in one way tls only the client validates the server to make sure it is a correct server but the server accepts all clients the server does not validate whether the client is the same client what i am looking what i was supposed to uh, respond back okay but the client where to uh, validates the server to make sure that it connects to it connecting to the say the correct server that is one way tls now let's see what is a two way tls right in, before even we go to the two way TLS, there is something called trust store and the key store. Let's see what is the key store and trust store. Key store is used to store private key and identify certificates that a specific program should present to both parties, server or client, for verification. Trust store is used to store certificates from certi uh, certified authorities that verify the certificate presented by the server. Now, in the two way TLS note both client and server validate each other to make sure that they are reaching out to the correct ones. So client will validate the server and server also validates the client. It exactly same as one way TLS with extra trust store to validate the client. Note the trust store will have the client certified certificate imported. Okay, once we have the certificates, we have to import them in the inside the server in the trust store. This, uh, here you see now the in the two way TLS client also has the public key and the private key including the certificates clients connect to the server and server presents the TLS certificate and public key the clients client verifies the certificate with the certificate authority and confirms that yes it's valid and true then a uh, client sends the TLS certificate to the server to validate it in the trust store and the server validates them with the trust store to make sure that this is the same client and it's a valid certificates if if the server is able to verify the data exchange is able to verify the certificates um, by the server then server starts exchanging the data so this is about the two-way TLS Okay, I think we already reached more than uh, 15 minutes. Uh, we'll talk about uh, security assertion, markup language tokens in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching my video uh, and please subscribe and watch my other videos as well. Thank you.